Work on your game at university.com. Topic of this video is what are you willing to cut off? Cutting things off. And this is all about this is all goes around and supports this concept of moving yourself forward and advancement and how are you going to get better whether you're talking you want to 10x your life or you just want to get to that highest level or you want to maximize uh, you want to make the most of your potential maximize on your opportunities any of those phrases that uh, all of us use or you hear other people use when it comes to being the best that you can be one of the keys to that is the understanding that making that kind of jump is often not so much about what you are willing to add on, but what you are willing to get rid of. In other words, what you're willing to cut off, which is why that's the topic of this video. I remember hearing years ago, they were somebody was talking about like a, a supermodel or a famous actress or whoever it was, doesn't matter who it was, even what the specific subject was, but the the line that the person said was this supermodel or this famous actress, she doesn't get out of bed for less than $10,000. That was the saying. And it was, and the, what I'll, I'm sharing that to help you get the spirit of the point. The spirit of the point was this individual, or at least they either were or they were being portrayed to be the type of person who sees himself at such a level that any opportunity that is not going to make them at least $10,000 is not even getting their attention. Like they're not even they're not even paying attention to it. They're not even taking your call. They're not going anywhere. I'll give you another example. There was a book. I can't remember who the co-author was, but it was a book this guy wrote with Donald Trump. This was pre-politics Donald Trump. And the guy was a, um, he like had this seminar business where he would do these seminars for business growth and personal development and stuff like that. And he had a seminar that was happening in New York City. And we know Donald Trump's a, a New York guy. And he decided that one time he was going to have Donald Trump as the guest speaker for his seminar. So he calls Donald Trump's offices and he speaks to Trump's assistant. He's like, yeah, here's who I am. Here's what I'm doing. I want to have Mr. Trump as a speaker for my seminar. And the woman said, okay, well, thanks for reaching out. No, what's your, no, do you have a budget for paying? Or no, what kind of budget do you have to hire Mr. Trump? And he said his budget was like, let's say his budget was something like $10,000. I got $10,000 to pay Mr. Trump to come speak at my event. So there's a bus here in front of you, but it's not moving at all. And it needs to make a left, but it's not moving anyway. So he says he has $10,000 for Mr. Trump. And the assistant says, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Trump is not interested and not available for your event. Now this guy, as he writes in the book, now mind you, he's writing in this, he's writing this in a book that he co-authored with Donald Trump. And then he goes on and says, all right, well, I realized that I was probably going to need to come up with more budget money to pay Mr. Trump, even though I only wanted to give him 10000 Let me see if I can come up with more money. So he goes back and he has 25000 that he's going to spend on Donald Trump. Calls the office again, gets the same response. I'm sorry, Mr. Trump is not interested and not available. And this guy, at this point, he decided, he said, I was determined that I was going to have Donald Trump as my speaker because I knew he would be able to give a great message. And having his name attached to my event is going to help me sell a bunch of tickets. So whatever it's going to cost me, let me just up the ante. So he goes back. He goes back with like 35000 same answer. He goes back with 50000 same answer. He keeps going back to them with more money, and he keeps getting the same answer. We're not interested. Finally, he says he has like a, I don't forget what the total number was. either. It was either 100000 or 150000 he finally comes with that number and the assistant says, okay, then we can probably make this happen and get it on the schedule. He ends up doing the event. Donald Trump comes to speak to this guy's event. They end up becoming friends. They do business together. And you know, long story short, they write this book together. The point being, Donald Trump had a cutoff number where if you were offering him less than $100,000, he wasn't taking your call. And his assistant was trained to tell you, not interested, we're not doing it. You gotta, she didn't even tell the guy to come back with more money. That's the key. Because when he first showed up, this, and this is what I want you to get, when the guy first showed up and offered ten thousand dollars, Trump's assistant said, "We're not interested." She didn't say, "You got to come with at least a hundred thousand. She just said, "No." She didn't say, "Hey, can we negotiate?" She didn't say, "Well, look, his number is this." She just said, "No, we're not interested." Dude had to have the initiative to come back and offer more money, and she kept telling him no. She told him no like four or five times before he finally showed up with the amount of money that got their attention. And that's the part that I want you to get. And many of you wouldn't be able to pull that off and it doesn't have to be 10,000 or $100,000 that we're talking about. It could be $10 or $100 that we're talking about. The point being, 
many of you would be unwilling because of many of us, especially in Western society, have had this scarcity mindset baked into us. You'd be unwilling to turn down the thing that you already said that you didn't want simply because you had a fear that you won't get something better. And if you're going to raise your level, if you're going to step your game up, I did an episode on my masterclass about raising the floor. By the time when this video first publishes, that one didn't come out yet. But if you're watching this way after it came out, it'll have come out already. Raising the floor is all about raising the standards of the minimum of what you are willing to accept and not accepting anything less than that. The challenge for many of you who are listening to this is that you are unwilling to raise your floor because of your fear of what you're going to lose when you raise that floor. Because when you raise the floor, you're cutting off everything that's below the floor. And the higher your floor, the more things that you have to cut off. Because this is the rule that you've set for yourself that I'm not accepting anything less than this. you got to cut a lot of things off the more you raise the floor. A lot of people don't want to raise the floor because of all the things you're going to miss out on. And again, it's all rooted in a scarcity mindset. Okay, well, I can't raise my price from $10 to $50 because that means anybody who's willing to offer me $25 now... I can't get that $25. All right, now I can't sell to them because I'm not accepting anything less than 50. All right. And if you're not willing to make that cutoff of anybody who's under 50, then it's going to be very hard for you to get 50 on a consistent basis because you keep accepting the 25. And here's how that works. This is just the law of the universe. The law of the universe is all about energy, that we read people's energy. All right. All of you have heard, or maybe you know, if you work with animals, for example, the animals can sense fear. A dog can tell when you're afraid of the dog or other wild animals can tell when you're afraid of them. And human beings, we are part animal. We can sense the energy that another person is carrying regardless of what they are saying. We can tell when a person doesn't believe what they're saying, even though they're saying it. You ever talk to somebody and they're saying one thing, but you can tell they don't really mean it, that they don't really believe it. They're not really thorough about the words that are coming out of their mouths. We can tell that. So if you're saying that my minimum is 50 and this somebody offers you 25, and then you start negotiating about the 25, well, your minimum is not 50. So you got to be willing to cut people off. You got to be willing to tell people no. You got to be willing to push people away. At some point, if you're going to raise your level, that's the way levels get raised. Not by looking at the ceiling, but looking at the floor. What's the lowest level that I'm willing to accept? What's the bare, what's the bare minimum baseline that is okay over here? When you ask yourself that question and you answer it and you start raising it, that's when you start making yourself eligible to go to higher and higher levels of what you're doing but you got to be willing to ask the question and you got to be willing to set the set the the barometer let's just call it or we, we can just call it setting the standard for what you're going to allow versus what you're not going to allow and what is that for you if you want to go to a higher level again now if you just want to stay where you're at and you're good with what you're doing then you can continue as you've been but if you're looking to go to a higher level this is a requirement this is not a a nice to have this is not a suggestion this is a requirement you have to decide what the standards are and then you got to hold yourself accountable to those standards and any accountability gaps that you have they're going to keep showing up over and over and over again because other people are going to exploit them as they can tell either through your actions through your words or through your energy that these things that you are calling standards are not actually standards if something is actually a standard there are no exceptions there are no off days, there are no exceptions, there are no, well, I'll let you slide this one time. It doesn't happen when you have an accept, when you have a standard. There are no exceptions to a standard. If there are exceptions, then what you have is a suggestion. Now, a suggestion, sometimes you can go with it, sometimes you cannot. But a standard, there are no off days. There are no off moments. There's no off peak to a standard. So that's really what you need to uh, drill into your head or have drilled into your head and then you got to put a process around it that makes it real and that's what we can help you with so speaking of all of that work on your game university i'm looking for people who are high level performers not those of you who are just uh, merely interested in getting better or it'll be cool to get better or you want to get better but people who seriously need to get better you know that you need to get better you know you need to advance you know you need to invest in yourself to move yourself forward in your career in your business in your life personally and professionally and you're serious about it i mean you're not just talking about it but you really mean it go to work on your game university.com links in the description to this video or wherever you are consuming this in my bio wherever you're consuming this work on your game university.com that's where you can get to working with me directly and we can start putting this to real use in real ways in your real life work on your game dre all